Hello everybody, welcome to lecture 14 of our course Computing Ethics and Society. In this lecture we're gonna start in chapter 5 that talks about crime. The topics we're gonna cover in this lecture is just one topic, hacking. Hacking which is the international unauthorized access to computer systems has changed over time there are three phases of the term hacking the first phase which is the joy of programming started in the early 60s and continued to the 70s this term was referred to positive thing a hacker was a creative programmer who wrote elegant or clever code where the word hack was an especially clever piece of programming code the second phase which was uh, from 70s to mid of 90s hacking meaning changed hacking took on negative connotations hacking was the pre the breaking into computers for which the hacker doesn't have authorized access and still primarily individuals hacking in that period include the spreading of computer worms and viruses and phone freaking and the companies began using hackers to analyze and in improve security the third phase that started in the mid of 90s when the web and mobile devices has grown viruses and worms could be spread rapidly and in this period there are many terminologies established the most common terminology related to hacking is the hacktivism and DOS. Hacktivism, which is the political hacking, and DOS, that is denial of surface, is the attacks used to shut down web sites. Now, think about the hacking if it is non-malicious is that okay or not actually hackers could accidentally do significant damage almost all hacking either harmless or harm is a form of trespass the new terminology that we have already mentioned the hacktivism is the use of hacking to promote a political cause actually there is a disagreement about whether it is a form of obedience and how whether it should be punished some use of appearance of activism to hide other criminal activities how do you determine whether something is hacktivism or symbol vandalism a factor to consider when evaluating hacktivism is the political system under which the hacktivists live from both an ethical and social perspective in free countries where almost anyone can tweet or post their words and uh, videos on the web for free it is hard to justify hacking someone else's site to promote a political cause. On the other hand, countries with oppressive governments control the means of communications and prohibit open political discussion. Now, there is a special kind of hackers. These hackers works as security researchers we call them as white hat hackers they use their skills to de 
to uh, demonstrate system vulnerabilities and improve security. In this regard, there are two ethical dilemmas. The first, is it ethical to break into a system without permission, even with good intentions? Second, how can people responsibly inform potential victims of security vulnerabilities without informing malicious hackers who would exploit them? Many security researcher hackers are scornful of big software companies because of the large number of security flaws in their products and because they are slow to plug leaks even when they know of them. Another terminology regarding hacking is the hacking as foreign policy. Actually, in this case, the government are the hacker. And for more details about this, you can return to the book. Stenet, which is uh, a new terminology regarding hacking, is an extremely sophisticated worm. It targets a particular type of control system. This start in 2008 where it damaged equipment in a uranium enrichment plant in Iran. Now, the most important factor that play a role in increasing hacking is the security or the poor of security. There are variety of factors that contribute to security weaknesses. For example, the history of the Internet and the Web, the inherent complexity of computer systems such as Windows, the speed at which new applications developed, the economic and the business factors, and also the human nature. Moreover, when the Internet started, it was with open access. There is no restrictions. Uh, the attitudes about security were slow to catch up with the risks. Firewalls are used to monitor and filter out communication from untrusted sites or that fit a profile of suspicious activity. Finally, security is often playing catch-up to hackers as new vulnerabilities are discovered and exploited. Now, the question here, who is the responsible for the security? Actually, there are three sides. The first one, the developers. Developers have a responsibility to develop with security as a goal. Also, the business. Business have responsibility to use secu security tools and monitors to prevent attacks. Also, the user themselves. They have a responsibility to ask questions and educate themselves on the tools to maintain security. Finally, try to answer these questions and See you in the next lecture. Goodbye.